three? Then how am I going to know? <laughs> <laughs> Ready? One, One two, two, three. three. Welcome, Welcome, beautiful, beautiful friends! friends! <laughs> <laughs> Well, welcome, friends. Um, Cindy and I felt moved to come together and share with you a thank you from our heart for all the love and support and celebration that we had during Cindy's recent five, what's that called, quadruple? I don't know. Too many. It's like a pen, you got pentagon. That has five sides, yeah, right? So you okay. had a pentagon heart transformation. Yeah. Sounds like sacred geometry to me. Okay. <laughs> but anyway. five of them five five passes <laughs> <laughs> um with that you want to get started yes okay um so we've had a chance to gather with people here locally um since the um surgery they had lots of questions and we wanted to share with them what our experience was and it's just such an outpouring of gratitude and love and appreciation that we wanted to share that with the whole community because we know how deeply we have been loved and supported and lifted through this whole process. And um, I'm very, very, very grateful. And I wanted to be able to tell you about that and also share with you what the experience is so the miracle can keep right on rolling. <laughs> so so I guess I'll act like an interviewer. So how did this start for you? How so did this start for me? Um, people have asked me, did I have symptoms beforehand? And the answer to that is not really. Um, about two to three months before, uh, this all occurred, I had been feeling some shortness of breath on exertion and also some difficulty, uh, uh, tightness in my chest. So climbing stairs, walking up hills, those kinds of things. And, um, I had been looking at it all from a metaphysical level. What do I know about this? Well, I know I'm not this form. So these conditions must be something that I'm choosing and that I can choose again. So I was trying to correct what I perceived to be something not already perfect and correct it within my mind. And after a few months of doing that and still having the symptoms at that point, I said, okay, whatever I'm trying to achieve on my own, isn't happening and now I'm going to take this to John Mark and I'm going to ask him about it. So uh, one evening I said I, I just want to talk to you about this and I told him what had been happening and what I had been done and I said will you please tune in and will you tell me what you see. So I, I did what I usually do and try and slide my awareness or consciousness out of the way and just ask Father what is the truth here? What would you have me say? What would you have me do? And immediately I got a very strong, I kind of feel it in my being like a nodding of, of like a proverbial Christ head or something. It's kind of funky. But I got this immediate, yes, yeah, she needs to go have it checked and it needs to be done sooner rather than later. And I'll just mention that, that that's been a process for me because my mind training, particularly from A Course in Miracles, was kind of rigid. No, own, you know, all of this would be illusion and categorically untrue. But... I've learned that I have to really set even the metaphysics aside, even the belief in thought systems aside, and just let love move through me and share what's most appropriate in the moment. Because I have no idea. I don't know what the divine plan of holy perfection is. So, you know, it was interesting for me to do that with Cindy because I probably have a, a vested interest in, in Cindy, maybe more so than others, despite we're still trying to smooth out what specialness we might have. But anyway... Um, to get to allow that to come and to share it very clearly and just very succinctly to which Cindy just felt the, yeah, okay, and then you take it from there. Well, with John Mark's response, yes, I think you should get this taken care of. What I felt within me was um, a great depth of acceptance, um, both that John Mark was not um, trying to... Um, assess how I had attempted to resolve this to this point. Um, so I didn't feel any sense of failure. What I felt was a sense of relief. Okay, th this is here. He's confirming that yes, this does need attention. So we'll go the medical route. And um, there wasn't a lot of time. It was just a few days before Christmas. We were trying to 
get it coordinated before the end of the year and um, uh, was flexible to doing it either here in Asheville where we live or in Wilmington, North Carolina where my old, oldest daughter lives. She's a cardiac care nurse. So we had appointments going back and forth. It just didn't look like it was going to come together before the end of the year. And then on... Surprise, surprise. surprise. <laughs> the universe was on the plan. And then I got canceled late, a call on Christmas Eve saying that the cardiologist in Asheville had had a cancellation and that I could come in and they'd do just an introductory exam. I had had one done in Wilmington, and they had told me at that point, well, your, your symptoms aren't conclusive and we need to do additional tests. So I went in to see the folks in Asheville and was told the same information. They're not conclusive. We can um, hear are test options. And there's nothing medically to indicate that you should choose one over the other. Here are the advantages. What would you like to do? Well, since one of the options might just give me some indication of what the cause was but wouldn't resolve it, and the second option would actually be this heart catheterization process where they'd take a camera up and they'd see what the problem was, I thought, why do the first one if I've got to come back later and do the second one? Let's just go straight to the second one. And I'd had a um, pretty pre pretty dominant family history with um, cardiac issues. So again, this was kind of forming in my mind that they'd go in, they'd take a look, they'd find a blockage, they'd put a stent in, we'd be done, it'd be over and done with. So we got the appointment for the day after Christmas. Um, and then they uh, said, okay, if it's the heart cath that you want to do, we'll get it scheduled. And I'm still pushing to get this done before the end of the year. And was told, we can schedule it for you on the, I guess it would have been the 29th? No, the 30th. Like schedule it for you on, no, it was the 30th. Okay, you're right. Yeah. Thanks. You're welcome. <laughs> that feels good. Sure, you're welcome. <laughs> so it was on the 30th. Uh, went in that morning and... Um, you know, I've been slightly medicated, so I'm awake for the procedure, but slightly sedated, and I'm getting bits and pieces of the conversation while I'm there in the room. And I'm listening to the commentary from the staff. I'm feeling very calm about the whole thing. It's just a procedure we're doing, and I already know what the outcome is going to be. <laughs> so <laughs> I hear a few words, and then they go th something along, well, that looks suspicious, and suspicious wait a second and then it was um we better call the doctor in. i think he's going to want to see this see this part of it and somebody comes over and tells me that they're going to do an additional procedure uh, a stress test of kind while they're there um and the surgeon's going to come in and watch that process and i'm going well this sounds more complicated than what i thought and then somewhere along the line i heard the word bypass come in and I'm like, oh, wait a second. That wasn't exactly what I thought was happening here. Okay, what's next? And then they came in, the surgeon came in, and he says, you know, we're taking a look, and the heart muscle itself is um, strong and healthy. It's just that you have all these blockages in your um, arteries, and we're going to need to either do three or five bypasses for you. I'm like, okay, then. And he said, we could probably get that schedule for you on Friday. I said, well, that be in the new year. Um, I'm available tomorrow. <laughs> new Year's Eve, how about you? <laughs> and they look at their calendar and it's like, well, how about that? We are too. So then Tuesday, New Year's Eve, we get scheduled to go in and do this bypass. Well, now that we're at the point of actually going in the bypass, um, it was a very conscious experience for both of us. We were aware that it was happening, not in any resistance to what was happening. And when I kept tuning within, all I felt from the Christ within was joy. It was like, be in joy. Be the light of the world right here. And of course, we're in the, the mainstream of the medical establishment at that point. Um, but it was really kind of interesting to be present in that. And through this whole procedure without being in a state of fear and being joyful and playful about it. I mean, it was just, I could see and sense and feel the staff who were attending to us. You know, whenever they would come in, it was like 
they assumed they were meeting us in great seriousness. <laughs> but of course, we weren't really in great seriousness because, you know, we know what our eternal nature is and we've created this experience. So we might as well join with it and participate. But it was a whole lot of fun. Yeah. Well, we'll right. talk a little bit more about that. But would yeah. you back up uh -huh. and actually talk about Santa Fe? Because I think that's uh. kind of the, the initiation point of this miracle that manifested through the surgery. Okay. So in early um, November, John Mark and I went to um, Santa Fe, a retreat that John Mark and Nook Sanchez were facilitating together. And uh, he'd been on the road for some time. This was like the last stop before coming home, and I was going out there to meet him. And as the date was approaching, I was feeling some kind of, I don't know, it was kind of strange feeling. Sometimes there'd be enthusiasm, and sometimes there'd be like, I don't really know if I want to do this. Eh. So I get to Santa Fe, uh, Albuquerque, landed in Albuquerque. John Mark picks me up. We're driving up to Santa Fe. And almost immediately in the car, in the drive, I just feel this emotion flow over me, and it's a difficult one to describe, but what it felt like was just this a real sadness, a real sadness, and, and I cried, and was just allowing whatever this was to flow through. Um, when we got to Santa Fe, John Mark had... Um, already had some time with the people there uh, who were already there gathering. Um, he was telling me about what his activities had been prior to my arrival. And as happens often in our relationship over the past few years, we've come to these moments when it's like, um, does this relationship still serve us? And that happens has happened with some frequency when he's been out on the road for a while and I've been at home. And on the surface, it looks like these are two paths that are moving in different directions. So this kind of came up again when we got to Santa Fe. And we, with John Mark's help, went into a radical inquiry about it. And um, what I discovered through that process was... I guess everybody has their theme for what, what theme are you going to act out? What's your storyline going to be in this expression? And for me, it had been resistance. So that... Um, Sorry. That's okay. <laughs> yeah. um, if a new idea was presented, you know, I'm the one that's at the back of the room taking notes, making comparisons deciding whether or not this is really worth the uh, effort, watching what everybody else's response is to the whole thing. And then at the end of all of this, I'm going to decide. So from the very beginning, I'm coming from a position of, tell me what you want to tell me, and then I'll decide. And what I recognized was the scale of that expression throughout my life. And the subtlety of it, the ways in which they seem so innocuous, you don't even notice them. But knowing that they're coming from the same energetic source. And in that recognition, I just it was like the, this unfolding of my life and going, I don't know. I might get teary here. Okay. Um, that's, That's cool. Good too. Yeah, of course. <laughs> I don't know that I've ever actually met another being where I have been wide open to whatever, whoever they are, so that I could accept them as they are in all of their beauty, all of their perfection, um, and just embrace that. There had this, my way of playing out separation had been to be in this form of resistance. And at times it was very open and evident, and sometimes it was incredibly subtle, but it was pervasive. It had been there my entire life. So in this recognition in Santa Fe that, oh, there's your theme, it was... No, thank you. 
I see that and I don't want any more of that. Um, so in whatever ways possible, this is something I want to drop. If I see it, I'm going to drop it. I'm going to drop it. I'm going to drop it. I'm going to drop it because I don't want to live that kind of constricted life. I don't want to be separate anymore. Well, cool. Cool. <laughs> so how, how cool is radical inquiry? Yeah. Um, it, it was really joyful that um, when I first kind of started my, on my own work and had some kind of expansiveness, like anything else, I wanted to shove my awakening down Cindy's sh throat so that she could have it too. She wasn't ready for it. She needed to come to it on, a, er, on her own. Finally, after Yeshua told me, patience, 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 maybe, I don't know, 10,000 times, I finally got it and recognized Cindy's got to walk her own pathway, and she'll come to this when she's ready. Um, when she came to me and said, will you help me look at this? Because she could feel the wonkiness in her being. Um, and when I tuned in, I was shown. I could see this. Uh, to me, it presented as like a, a preemptively oppositional pattern. It, oppositional. It's just like any and everything, there was the devil's advocate kind of mm -hmm. running before she even knew anything. And so it was kind of carried in, and that's her whole past, and she was living that past kind of every moment. So once it was revealed, just a couple of very uh, spirit-guided questions helped Cindy descend down into her awareness and actually finally get enough distance from this pattern that she could see it without being it because she had only known herself her whole life as that pattern. That was who she was. So when she got down to it and could actually get enough distance to see it, then oh, I could see the revelation happen in her, in her being as she recognized, oh my gosh, this is the only way I've known myself. This is my egoic expression. This was my pre-incarnation choice for separation. I've never known myself without it. But now that she had enough distance, from a place of not being it in distress, but actually witnessing it kind of from Christ's consciousness, then she didn't want to have it anymore. Um, and I could actually feel the energetic release as that distance happened, the recognition occurred, and then there was a letting it go, not in it's bad or it's wrong. I mean, there wasn't a lot of energy about that, but oh, now I see. For me, my pattern had always been abandonment. And it took me a long time to get enough distance to see it and see its nuance and its subtleties and how pervasive it was. So when she saw it, um, you know, now we kind of leap forward to the, to the bypass surgery. Well, no wonder she had blocks in her heart. I mean, she was living with a preemptive block to the natural flow of life, the kind of path of least resistance, which is God's love moving us very naturally. So she had been living in a very um, oppositional place, blocking the flow. So it's not the least bit surprising that that manifested that inner condition expressed in the body because the body was being used to resist creation, to resist unity. Um, so no wonder that it had blocks. And I just love the symbol of, you know, bef because she makes this choice in in Santa Fe, because she was really kind of living in the choice for death. Mm. You know, you were living in the choice for death and separation. So the body, doing what the body does for us, because it's our servant, it was manifesting itself to, okay, great. If opposition's the way, we'll clog the heart, and that's how we'll experience death. Well, when she saw it, she made a choice for life. So I'm not the least bit surprised that the Spirit began to move through both of us to get her to the point where she was willing to, to look at this and join again and then move. So before there was really any damage to her heart, which, you know, if this thing had gone untreated, it probably wouldn't have been too long that she'd just fallen over. Mm. But now that she made a choice for life, the spirit was moving to correct that block. Now, you know, I can hear a lot of Course in Miracles students out there going, well, that should have just been an instant healing and nothing would have ever happened. Ah, I got a point to say, but you want right. to go first? No, you Fisher. go. You're oh, right. I feel it. <laughs> um, we never fully understand the, the extent of the miracle. And one of the things that has become so clear to me through this process is that 
an instantaneous healing for me and that recognition would have been so much less than the potential that the miracle holds. So in this unfolding, in its dramatic way, and in its involvement of so many people, the miracle has amplified and has extended in ways we could have never, ever have anticipated or planned for. So an instantaneous healing would have had a very narrow effect. But now, all of you get to be part of it. And I am just bowled over by the perfection of it. Yeah, that's cool. So I guess we'll skip forward. So that okay. they keep sending in the hospital after they've done this test on her. They keep her in that night. So as I get home, immediately I tune in and say, Spirit, Father, Self, what would you have me do here? And it was to celebrate Cindy and her Christedness, to celebrate her because she's the holy child of God in whom the Father's very, very well pleased. So without any fear, it wasn't like I was sending out a request, oh God, help us, help us, help us. It was rather the recognition that Christ in her glory, in her creation, was going to go through this. And it was an invitation to invite others to join with us in that. So I sent it out on just the One Who Wakes Facebook page. Um, well, within, I don't know, maybe 15 or 20 minutes, I get a, a ding back from um, JM, who John Mark Hammer, the, the channel of the way of mastery, and he had sent a beautiful little blurb inviting me to share that and invite all other beings to join us at 11 a.m. the next morning, wherever they were in the world. And, and our little one who wakes database is way global, and that's a whole nother set of miracles. But so we then posted on the Way of Mastery page a couple of pilgrimages and PFs, and actually Nook and Sparrow posted it on the Take Me to Truth page. And it was just inviting all beings to come together and set aside their seriousness, set aside their belief that anything bad or wrong is happening, put all that aside, and just turn within and slowly start chanting, it just in your mind, Cindy's name very slowly, and increase it with... Um, both power and frequency as it rose up. So that was the invitation to ask all these beings all over the world to join us in this celebration. Well, Cindy's already been taken up the next morning for the surgery, so I'm actually just settling in. It's about maybe 10 till 11, just settling in on a couch down in the lobby because I wanted to. I didn't want to be sitting. I wanted to be out of body, whatever needed to happen. So I'm tuning in, and I can feel this incredible mass. I mean, I was just oh, so I was almost overwhelmed with it. I could feel this incredible mass of beings, many of which were incarnate, many, 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 many which were not incarnate, gathering. Um, and then they call my name. They're like, Stroud, Stroud. So I go over to the desk, and they're actually going to let me go up to see Cindy. So I get to actually go up and be present with her right before She's going into the surgery. And as I'm going up, interestingly, this meditative connection wasn't disconnected. And I could continue to feel beings coming and the energy rising. And when I got to Cindy and I actually saw her, so I, I see her laying there in the hospital bed. And in my inner vision, I see her beingness in the center of this incredible mass of, of light. And she is just egging it on. She's calling everyone <laughs> to give all of their love to her that she wants them to know how much love they have to give. I mean, there was just like completely wide open, like, bring it. I'll take all the love and joy that there is from you without any fear. And that's just, that's not an energy I've ever really known of her. So I was just completely bowled over. It was just so cool that her beingness was so wide open and inviting all other beings to be open and in that celebration. And she didn't, we didn't talk much. Um, but if you, on Facebook, I posted this beautiful picture of her wearing like a silver, silver, hat silver hat like shower cap or something, or something yeah. with, with like something across yeah. your forehead. I don't yeah. know if they got brain waves from it. It might be interesting <laughs> to check out. Um, and all Cindy said was, um, I surrender into the demonstration that only love is real. <laughs> oh my God. And I knew and I could feel that that was 
the Christ that Cindy is that was speaking. It wasn't it wasn't her past. It wasn't anything else. It was her beingness saying, I am here. This is my creation. And I surrender into its use for the, for the atonement. And I was just completely bowled over. Mm. And then, of course, I got a little kiss and issued, issued rushed, go out of the room <laughs> as she was headed off for surgery. So my experience in those few moments before actually going into the surgery is that... Um, Again, this really, really deep gratitude for this whole experience of it. And there was a recognition that there was absolutely no fear. The mind had not rushed off into its what ifing or how's that going to be. There had been no future projection going on. Um, what I felt within me was this huge gratitude, deep peace, and I wanted the people there to pay attention because something miraculous is happening here. Pay attention. So as the attendants were coming through, getting me all prepped, I made a point to stop people and look them in the face and say, thank you for being part of this miracle because I knew exactly that that's what was happening, and I wanted them to feel it. I wanted them to know that something indescribable was in process. Whew. <laughs> wow. Cool, honey. Yeah, it was beautiful. Yeah. So um, the surgery took six hours. Um, many times during the surgery, I could tune in, and I kind of had like a bird's eye view. So I could see a bit of what was going on. Um, but the interesting thing was, in that point of view, the body didn't have really any energy to it. And as I tuned into Cindy, it was just like, well, bam. I mean, her beingness was just enormous. And there was so much love and so much joy. And I'd never felt that in her at all. But... Wherever you were while this was going on, you were having a bang up, great big, <laughs> yeah. huge, huge time. Um, and I just knew it didn't matter what what seemed to happen in the mm. events. It didn't need to, none of that needed to matter. That I knew that you knew that you were okay and that we are okay and everything is okay. Mm. Just absolutely brilliant. Mm. So the one point during this whole episode where I saw an invitation arise in me to move into fear was when they took me up to see her after the surgery and her she was laying there actually had a breathing tube in just completely unconscious um and sh she wasn't there in the body I mean the body was doing what it was doing um and that was a temptation in my mind to to move into this idea of death um, and I saw it arise and said, no, no, I know who she is. And this appearance doesn't really mean anything. She's more alive and aware than ever, ever, ever. Um, so I don't know if you remember anything after that. Mm, no, not till waking up in the, the room afterwards. With the, the tracheotomy or whatever they call it, that was still... Breathing too. Yeah. yeah. One of the things that... Um, in the post-operative state, uh, uh, wow, it was a sense of being in so much just wonder of how everything was unfolding and the perfection of it all and a deep, deep understanding that I am not the maker and doer. <laughs> thank God. Uh, yeah, thank no! God. <laughs> um, so that, ev that that I could rest in great peace, that all was well, had always been well, could be nothing other than well. Um, didn't have a lot of pain. Um, had a lot of curiosity. I told John Mark the other day I didn't know that my body could turn this many different colors. So, um, but my energy was good, so getting up and moving around uh, was easy to do. We had wonderful interaction with the staff and our family members that came. And um, 
I felt like I was the way in which I could most demonstrate love to them was to assure them that nothing was wrong, that all was well. Uh, we had fun getting out, and uh, you, they get you up, and they want you to do walking. So we <laughs> they have these lovely walkers that you put your prop your arms up on, and then you can shuffle along. Um, so one morning we had um, we put on the song "Happy" Pharrell Williams song happy and I had it tucked in my gown and I'm going down the hallway and I'm doing the look happy shuffle <laughs> with the clown nose and um, I think your dance moves are improved too. I bet they are <laughs> <laughs> and as John Mark said one of the things about it was the reaction from the staff there at the hospital um, because you know if you go into uh, for a funeral service and the folks that are operating the funeral home, they're somber, you know, and they, they, they're they operating from a place of grief or fear or loss or what have you. And you could just whoa, feel the heaviness of that when you move into the space. Now, here we are, and we're celebrating. Our family, I think, even thought we were crazy. Yeah, I think they might they have. Didn't, they didn't quite get us. Like, this is supposed to be more serious. <laughs> yeah. so, but we weren't at all. And um, progress very easily through whatever their requirements were for us to be released on four days after the surgery. And, and what we're only eight or nine days out now. So you nice, look fabulous, right? by Thanks, the way. I feel great. Yeah. <laughs> How does it feel to out. have no blocks to the presence of love in its flow? <laughs> oh man, wide open. <laughs> All right, that's sexy. <laughs> So I had I had some um, interesting experiences in the um, post operative stage. Um, you know, you don't really sleep in the hospital. They're always coming in and checking this or checking that. So my um, level of consciousness never really dropped down into a, a sleep state for very long. Um, but I noticed immediately that my visual perception had changed. So that, um, well, if I could give you an example, if you were looking at a, holo, a holodeck that has all of these tiles, you know, in this dome shape over it, and you're looking at the full panorama, and that's your landscape, and that's what you think the reality of it is. And all of a sudden, off to this side, five or six panels go flip, flip, and you go, what's that? And you look, and well, it looks, it looks okay. And then you go back and all of a sudden, flip, flip, flip. It was as if um, I was seeing the undoing of the illusion as it was happening. In the full knowledge that I was creating my universe in that moment, and, and every present moment of now, um, we have these concepts that we're given and we're willing to believe them because they ring true to us in some way. But there is a line at which point what our willingness to believe then becomes a knowing. And in my case, in this example, the knowing came and then the evidence the proof of the knowing arrived. So I had these shifts in visual perception where a slight turn of the head and all of a sudden it's like the scenes all shifted around. Seeing um, into the matrix. Yes. Whoa, that's cool. <laughs> um, also had a lot of light play so that if I was looking into a space and I could see light refracting off of something, uh, instead of that beam of light, if you will, being narrow and going to a certain distance, much wider and much further expanded. So my whole awareness of light expressed around and through my being also shifted. I had some uh, fascinating dreams, some of which included this sense of downloads of massive amounts of data 
it was as if I'd have an image of a large leather-bound book that then got shifted into some kind of electronic communication. And I would see pages and pages of formulas and strings of numbers. And I just had this sense that um, well beyond uh, my thinking mind's ability to comprehend, some big aspects of universal knowledge was coming in um, because my mind, my heart, was wide open to receive it. Um, so I had that. I also had this sense of having other um, not incarnate beings with me, which was not something I've experienced much before. Um, but in those cases, uh, there was so much love and so much beneficence extended. I, I felt for several days that I was being watched over, um, cared for on levels that were far beyond how form was presenting itself in the particular moment. The tenderness of that was very, very sweet. Well, honey, I'm just so grateful I got to be there and witness your transformation, witness you being the Christ so powerfully. Whew. Great teacher. Thank you very much. <laughs> I thank you, dear. My mighty companion. Yeah, how about that? <laughs> so had the miracle not gone down this way, you wouldn't be in a state of knowing. Correct. So holy perfection, we never know what it takes to move us from doubt to knowing or uncertainty to certainty or fear or love or, you know, distress to peace. Um, but I know my beingness as Christ is infinitely deeper and known and embodied because of this whole thing. And um, I just, I have felt the love and support of people from, all around the world through this whole process. Um, had a ch chance to talk to people locally, but also some folks from um, other parts of the, of, the, of the world who had been in these groups, these gatherings, that had called my name in support of this demonstration. And um, most of you I haven't met. <laughs> I hope to meet you in form at some point. But I do want you to know that your love has been felt. Cool. So, yes, thank you all for yeah. your joyful celebrations of Cindy as Christ. And if I learned anything, and I thought I was actually already pretty good at this, about celebrating myself as Christ, but when I tuned in and saw you receiving, you, you raised the bar for me, honey. So... <laughs> So thanks, and to all of you who answered the call to join with us and give your love, extend your love, um, Nook and Sparrow and supporting the Take Me to Truth group, JM and the Way of Mastery, uh, Friends of the Heart family, our own One Who Wakes community, uh, we are so deeply, deeply grateful. And it's our joy to celebrate you as the Christ that you are, no matter what you think. <laughs> no matter what. <laughs> No so matter who you think you are. <laughs> we are always joyfully ready to celebrate and to witness to our own divinity and the divinity of all those who come into our joyful awareness. And we hope that that will be you. And we thank you. We honor you. We love and celebrate you. And you close it out, honey. Miss Wide Open Heart. <laughs> so we're going to hit the road in 2015 kind of traveling a lot and lots of opportunities to see each and every one of you up close and personal and uh, welcome in for a big hug. We love you with an absolutely infinite love and a perfect peace. Yeah, a perfect peace. And you know what? I feel moved to ask for a love offering. All right. You know, um, five bypass surgery is not cheap, even though we have insurance. Yes. Um, so if you feel so moved, because this is all we do is extend love. You know, neither of us have jobs. We just do as the spirit guides us to do, whether it's waking up to the movies or 
retreats or play shops or whatever. Um, so if you feel moved to support us, to share your abundance, we would joyfully receive it. We, we joyfully receive um, it. You can go to onewhowakes.org in the upper right-hand corner is a give button. You can click there. And if you just put a note in there that it's to support um, Cindy and uh, expenses that have come from this, we would joyfully, joyfully receive. But we know we'll be taken care of no matter what. Yeah. So we love you with an absolutely infinite love and a perfect peace. And we support the beings. Or we thank the beings who support our incarnation as Christ. Mm. And we look forward to playing with you soon. Anything else? <laughs> no. Good night. See ya. <laughs> <laughs>